know, you know what, yeah? You know, I realised, fam. I think, I think, yeah, one of the things that hinders us in our faith, yeah, or, like, one of the most stumbling blocks that I've realised that, like, hinders us from moving forward in our faith is the fact that I feel like um, a lot of people are comfortable with seeing God as God, but not Lord. Like, like they're comfortable with seeing him as saviour, but not Lord. You see what I'm saying? And I feel like not seeing him as Lord, it hinders the involvement of your relationship with him. You see what I'm saying? Because most, most people like to see him as the person who saved them from sin, but not the person who keeps them righteous. You see what I'm trying to say? Like the person who forgave them from all of their sin, but not the one who helps them live a righteous lifestyle. So I feel like, bro, like no one's actually no one's actually actively pursuing holiness, bro. No one's actively pursuing, no one's being intentional about building on their relationship with the father, man. And, I, and to me, I feel like that's a big hindrance because you would never experience the, the fullness or the full life that he has for you. That's why, bro, in the Garden of Eden, bro, the first thing the enemy done when he approached Eve was said, did God not say? He left out the word Lord. Like, like that's the first time he omitted the word Lord. Because if you omit the word Lord, you omit that relationship that he has with you. And 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 if you don't see that relationship to be there, you, you don't see his commands or laws or his way of life to be good. You see what I'm trying to say? And I feel like we need to start seeing God as more than just saviour, man. He's actually our Lord. Like he's the one that has, like, ah, right, cool. I'm going to break it down like this here. I go to my friend's house the other day. Yeah. He lives in one. He, he lives in a place, and it's tap broke. You know what I'm saying? And this guy wasn't panicking. I was panicking. This guy wasn't panicking because, and I asked him, bro, like your tap ain't working. Like, why are you not panicking? He told me that, bro. I'm gonna just call the landlord. I said, okay, cool. Like, but be quick because I need to use the tap. But in that moment. I realized that the reason why he didn't panic over the situation was because he recognized that the landlord had ownership over the house. So if anything is broken, it's not his responsibility to fix it. It's the landlord's responsibility because he is lord over the house. And I deeped it and I said, Rah, how many of us have, have actually given God ownership over our lives? Like, like how many of us have pressed deeper than, oh God, I think, like, like, oh God, I thank you for forgiving me of my sins. That's, all of that is cool. Jesus' death on the cross did pay for all of your sins. But Jesus didn't, Jesus don't only cover your sin, he sets you free from sin. And I feel like nobody's actively pursuing um, righteousness, not, not as a way to make you right, but because you've been made right. So we don't obey to be made right. But we live right because, no, we don't obey to be made right. But because we've been made right, we obey. And I feel like the, the title Lord, many people don't, we, we say it with our lips, but I feel like our hearts are far away from that statement. Because even if I read Psalms, David always says, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my redeemer. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Me and this is the one that has ownership over my life. Like, I can't say that I, like, I love this guy, but I don't obey his commands. You see what I'm saying? And for me, this is, this, this, this is kind of hefty for even me because there's areas in my life where I've not made God Lord. I've not made God Lord over my decisions. I've not made God Lord over my thought processes. I've not made God Lord over my desires. So when I'm angry and someone spreads a rumor about me, I would rather react and get revenge than rather recognizing that the Lord said that vengeance is of him. So I'm supposed to love those who 
persecute you. Like, okay, I get that. I get the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. But right now, man's feeling a bit, I'm feeling a certain type of way. So I would rather set up a certain type of, of appointment to meet my needs, if you get what I'm trying to say. Rather than knowing that the Lord has said that we're supposed to keep ourselves pure until the right time. But everyone's trying to pick and choose like, like what they follow when it comes to God. Like they're trying to pick the ones that are comfortable. And brother, it's either he's Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. You see what I'm saying? Like, and I feel like the moment you begin to see him as Lord, the moment you begin to see that his commands and his precepts and his way of life for us are actually good. Like, he, like he has our best interest in mind. So if a person slaps you, the Bible says turn the other cheek. That's not being literal and like saying like just be receiving slaps left, right and center. But it's saying that what they do to you, you can't respond the same way, man. You're different. Vengeance is of me. And I don't know why I keep saying the same point, but I feel like there's a lot of people that have offense. Like they're being offended by what someone has done and they're like they're planning their revenge attack. Like, I don't know what the case may be, why I feel this point so strong in my spirit, but I really feel the Lord saying that that don't be offended, man. Like even, even though you have every right to be. Believe that to me. And then I feel like it's when you start to see him as Lord that you will trust him more, that you'll rely on him more, that you'll give your life to him. Because he's a good Lord. Like like, he's a very good Lord. Like, God is so good. Like, imagine God being so good, yeah, that he, before you were even born, he had a plan for you. Like, imagine God being that good that he factored in your missteps, your mistakes, your, your failures, and still said, I choose that person. And the moment they give their life to me, I'm going to let them know that I have a plan for them. A plan to prosper them. A plan to give them a hope in the future. Like, like, you know. And I really feel like we need to go deeper in our relationship with him. We, it's not just enough to see him as saviour. It's not just enough to see him as, 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 as God. He's more than a God to you. He's your Lord, you know? And it's like, I've experienced the fruits of this relationship and I can't keep it to myself, bro. You see what I'm saying? Like, I cannot keep this to myself. It's like, and the crazy thing about this is that God wants this relationship with us more than we do. Like, like he wants us to be planted next to him so much that we bear fruit in every season. Like, he wants us to be, be like a tree planted by the streams of living water that we prosper in, in, in all our do, just as our soul prospers, that we bear fruit in every season, that all we do prospers, that no weapon formed against us prospers, that he shows us which way that we should take, if we should take left or right, that he shows us where to go, what not to do, what to say, how not to say. Like union on a daily basis, man. This ain't only for Sundays. And I really feel like us seeing him as Lord, that's the day that it will be a game changer for all of us is because everybody can see him as God. Everybody can see him as Savior. Many can, but only a few can see him as Lord, man. And it's that few who go deeper and that relationship is accessible for everybody. You know? And I really feel like We need to progress intensely in our relationship with the Father, man. And the first step is seeing him as more than just your Savior. Seeing him as your Lord. And know that he wants ownership over your life because, first of all, he made it. Like, who better to give your life to than the person who made it in the first place? Wouldn't he know what to do with it? Wouldn't he know what's best for you? Wouldn't he know what is not for you? And I think, I think the day that I began to really see him as Lord, I realized how much of a good, good father he is.
I realized how much of a of of a great friend he is. I I realized how much he's a um friend to my soul, man. And the surgeon from my heart, man. So it's my desire that like we see him more than just as a savior. But we see him as the Lord. Because he desires that kind of relationship more than we ever will. You know? And like I say all the time, I don't know who, who this was for. Like I say a lot of things, but I don't know who this one was specifically for. But if he it knows for you, and you know that I've only been seeing him as Savior, man. The Father's saying that I don't want my relationship with you to only be on Sundays, man. I want it to be throughout your week, throughout your year, throughout your life. And that only begins when you start to see me as Lord. I know that I'm a good, good father. And I'll never leave you the wrong way. You see what I'm saying? So, if there's a thought that I would love to leave you, Lord, um, or leave myself with, or leave whoever with, is that God's more than your Savior, man. He saved you, absolutely. But not only has He saved you from, He saved you for. And that's a life that involves him. And he misses you, you know. And he's open and he's waiting with open arms to welcome you home, man. And the crazy thing about this, this ain't even this ain't even for people who are not in Christ, you know. These are for people who already know Christ. He's saying, come deeper, come deeper. Enter rest. My yoke is light, my burden is easy. I'm your Lord. Trust me with your life. Trust, trust the ways that I have concerning you. Like, trust the, the precepts and the boundaries and the standards that's in my word for your life. They're not there to harm you. They're there to serve you. You know, and yeah, man, if he's not Lord of all, He's not Lord at all. So let's give God that, that, that intentionality, man. And let's go deeper in our relationship with him. Peace.